What's up guys, we're at the Exeti booth and this EG6 Civic really stopped me in my tracks. This is a time attack build. We got Mark Johnson here, the builder of this Rocket EG6. Correct. So you built this at home and this is an unlimited time attack car. Can you tell us a little bit about this build? I raced with Redline Time Attack back in the day and I progressed my CRX, which I've had for 20 years. So then I wanted to get the more aero and the bigger wheels, but I didn't want to do it to my poor CRX. I've had it 20 years. So that's why this started. And this started in August of 18. So the goal was for it to do a complete build and execute everywhere. So the car was actually put on a rotisserie and the bottom of the car is just as nice as the top of the car. I wish I could show that to you guys. Yeah, so, okay, I, I know we're at the show. We would love to, as Mark said, we would love to shoot this at a racetrack and hopefully that will happen soon. I would love to hear it, see it, all of that. And it looks like you have a passenger seat, so maybe I can get a ride in it one day. Drive. I could drive it. Oh of my course. God. Okay, that would be amazing. But we just wanted to kind of give a quick overview of this build because it is just so cool to see an unlimited time attack Civic. And it's That's... still street legal. It, it, and it's still street it's legal. It's still street legal. Street legal. No, it is. Oh, really? It's got headlights, taillights, brake lights. I wired all that up. The whole entire harness was built by me. The interior, the brake lights, the headlights, um, the engine harness, everything. So th one of the things that I noticed right away, I love this. I think this is hilarious, too, that you have like this evacuation. Um, what is that, the intercooler, right? Yeah, this is the intercooler and the radiators in the trunk. Oh, okay, so tell me about the motor package here. Um, so it's a Precision 62, 66. Might be talking to Precision about a 64, 66, um, but it's a fully built sleeve block, Golden Eagle, uh, four piston head, um, all the goodies inside. Mm -hmm. And then how much power have you dynoed this setup? Um, so around 700, and it, but it's actually capable of 900, so. How can you even drive this thing with that much power? Now, that's where fuel tech comes into play. In um, February, we're gonna dyno the car at fuel tech and put tracks control on it. Huh, so then it, it, it allows you to essentially put down as much power as, as you possible. can as possible throughout the gear ranges. Correct, yeah. correct. Huh. correct. Okay, all right. So I'm kind of a Honda dummy. So how many liters is this now? Or did you? This is a 1.7. It's still, okay, so it, it started life as a 1.6? Six. Six. Okay, now so it's a 1.7. So I one kept seven. it small so I can rev high. Because you know the LS, the bigger, longer blocks, they won't rev as high. Got so it. that's why I kept it this So way. what does it rev out to then? Um, 11. 11 on a turbo car. 11. That is pretty incredible. Uh, okay. But technically I changed gears at nine. Right, so. got it. There's so many awesome things going on in the interior. Uh, I see you have an anti-gravity yes, battery. They are, they are a sponsor of me. It's so. very, very lightweight. Very light. But I also like the fact that you kept a lot of the stock dash. And I put, um, the iPad is removable. So tell me about the transmission that you're running. It is all stock at this point. So it's got a um, M factory limited slip um, in it and then uh, carbon synchros. But I'm here today trying to pull in some transmission help. So. Huh. What, what's your dream transmission that you would want to put in here? Probably, I've talked to Graf a lot, so I think they're on board. So I may be getting Graf dog box. Hmm, okay. Which will put the car on another level. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can't imagine the stock transmission would handle that much power for that long. It, it did at VIR in October, hmm. so. Um, <laughs> one of the craziest things about this build that I noticed is that the exhaust goes through the cabin and then it actually exits out the rear. All right, so the reason for that is the car does have a carbon fiber flat bottom. There's no room to, to, for the exhaust to exit. So that's why I had to, there's some rules, like I do NASA, SCCA sometimes, the rules state that the exhaust has to exit behind the driver. So that forced me to do that. Got it. So where is the actual rear radiator setup? Is it underneath the exhaust? It's right here. What? That's it? Yeah, that's it's that it. small? It's that small. It's actually three rows, so it's like 
four times bigger or, or approximately almost four times bigger than a stock. That is incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a build where the exhaust is actually over the cooling system. <laughs> it, but it, and it actually comes out here. Yeah, that's the exit, yes. Huh. That's the whole rocket design. That's Yeah, that's a Reggie build. Yep. Very cool. Yep. And how much of this is carbon fiber? So it still has the stock quarters and, and the rear bumper and front dump bumpers factory. Other than that, everything else is carbon. Have carbon you, doors, carbon roof. Have you had a chance to weigh this? <laughs> yes. I'll tell you what it is off camera. Okay. All right. It's very light then. Yeah, it's, it's what I wanted. Okay. So the uh, car does have... Um, titanium bolts as a suspension to, to lighten the car. So hmm. that was something I used to my advantage. Uh, tell me a little bit about the wheel and tire package. It looks like you're running a way, way, way bigger front tire than the rear. So the, the back is, is a 17 by nine, um, 255. And then the front is an 18 by 10 and a half, 15 offset, 295 tire. But I actually plan on running some 315, so going a little bit wider. But the cool thing is, when you say they don't fit, I've done extensive work in, in the, the wheel area arches. All this back here, right here, has been moved up to give clearance for that. 315s. That yeah. is just... That's... Yeah, I mean, you need every bit of that, Robert, to I put do, down yeah, the power right, with right. this vehicle. So uh, where can people see you drive this? Where do you think you're going to drive this first? So I should be at Global Time Attack at Road Atlanta, but I'm green there, so I have to learn and learn the car. And then we will go to New Jersey. We're planning on doing Global Time Attack New Jersey. And then we talking to the Grid Life guys about going some of the East Coast events. I'm super excited they're coming on the East Coast this year. Yeah, so. that would be super cool. So that is the plan. Well, Mark, thank you so much for showing us your vehicle. I'm sorry we're not at a racetrack where we can actually show the absolute crazy performance that this thing has. Um, but uh, I'm just glad to be able to see it in person. I'm glad all. you got to see yeah. it, brother. Cool. On to the next one.